So we all know what machine learning is, what neural network is, but when it comes to create something new, which is never done before, that is the point where we feel stuck. Like we don't really know from where to start, where to get the data, how to create the model, how to train it, how to do all the things. We feel stuck at some point. And this problem is not with two or three people. It is just so common that everyone faces this problem. So, hey guys, I welcome you all to the brand new series where I will try my best to teach you, to take you through how I make my projects, how I think of the product project and how I am able to make it to the end product. So, I'm going to do all this by taking an example of my recent project, which is live emoji detection. And uh, when I thought of that project, I was like, how to start? where to collect the data, from where will I get the data. So I'm going to take you through all of that, all of the phases which I go through and I will try my best so that next time when you have your, your own unique idea, you will have a clear cut path from where to start and how to finish it very beautifully. So shall we start? Uh, in this video particularly, I'm going to basically cover a point which is data collection part. Uh, because that is the most, uh, I would say, the most important and the difficult part. And after that, once you have the data, you just have to prepare it, clean it and make the model, just fit the data on it and just run the inference setup on that. So we'll start with a empty pro uh, pro uh, folder, let's say emoji. And let's open it and create a new document. So I'm going to create a blank script for the data collection. I'm going to call it data collection.py so in this script i'm going to write some uh, code and using which we'll be able to collect our data so first of all let's think of the problem uh, let me just open a drawing so what's the main idea of this project first of all the user will be available in the screen user will be able to uh, interact with the laptop by using the camera feed and user will be able to give the reactions through the camera for example by using the hand or he can just give some, um, you know, just give the different positions of hand, of expressions of face and using of which the computer or our project would be able to think or to predict what emoji or what expression does the user have. Sounds pretty interesting. But at the same time, we don't know from where to start. So first, the data collection. Now I would recommend you to pause the video and try to think like how will the data going to look like, like how, how the data will going to look like, how your model will going to look like, just imagine that in your mind. So number one solution which, which I thought initially like we will have so many images of different different emotions and of I would say different different classes like hello, hi, nope. Uh, like all so many emojis we'll have all the images we can run a convolution neural network through it and then finally uh, we can train the model and then we can run the inference on it second solution by using the media pipe now look if we talk about the emotion or the the emoji we want to predict let's say let's take the example of hand our hand will going to have some landmark points like this and MediaPipe is the library which would be very easily be able to predict uh, all these landmarks of my hand, of my face, like all of this very easily at very fast frame, like 24 or 25 frames per second. And what I can do, I can take these landmarks, I can give it to my model and my model would be able to take these points, of course, and then predict the particular emoji associated to that particular face landmark positions sounds pretty uh, interesting and easy to do so why not we just jump into the python script and try collecting the data uh, look i hope you know now you know like what we are going to do we are going to collect different landmark point of our face and one particular sample or one particular row would be uh, comprising of all the key points like this key point all the face key points, all the left hand landmarks, all the right hand landmarks. One particular sample will have all of that. Other sample will have all of that. Other sample will have all of that. And based on that, we will give, we will train our model. So why not just see by using 
live script so let's just code this so let's open this uh, data collection in sublime whatever you want to use all right so here is our blank script and okay so as i said first of all we are going to use media pipe so let's quickly import all the libraries we are going to use and then of course we are going to use numpy at some point i am pretty sure about that also and of course we will going to use cv2 also that's all uh, i think for now if we in future if we need anything we'll just import it on, on the way so first of all we will going to make a simple script which will going to uh, take uh, take in the video feed and give output to the user of the video feed so let me just quickly write that code it is very simple we'll just use video capture class in the cv2 and while true all right so this is very simple code uh, we are not doing anything new i think you must be so much familiar with this code we are just using the video capture class to capture uh, the video feed by using the webcam of our laptop and then uh, reading that frame showing it to the user if user presses the escape key destroy all the windows and release the camera's resource and get out of this loop very simple and straightforward so why don't we just run this and try to see if everything is going on right or not python data collection.py all right so everything is running pretty fine and after that from uh, this we can just directly call the media pipe library so i'll just directly going to import these lines to save the time so we are going to use holistic solution inside the media pipe what this holistic do uh, it have uh, the solution which takes in the frame which is this frame it will going to take in that and in return it will going to return all the facial key points my left hand right hand my body all the landmarks of my body my face full body holistic and uh, this is the holistic class and holis is the object of that and uh, this is hands for showing the visuals and this is a drawing utils again to show the visuals and uh, one thing i would really like to change is to flip this frame since i don't want that mirror effect so the source will be frame of course flip code will be one flip left to right and now uh, i'm going to use this holis object i'll give in this frame but not directly first i'll have to convert this frame by using the cvt color to rgb because cv2 reads in bgr format and i'm going to call process function inside this holis and i'm going to pass this frame and in return i'll get the result out of that let's just directly use the drawing to draw on our frame uh, drawing dot draw landmarks and this result variable this result variable in it it has face landmarks left hand landmarks and right hand landmarks so i am saying to drawing dot draw landmarks like draw all of that on my frame and the key points this drawing have to draw is holistic dot face connections my hands dot hand connections hands dot hands connection so let's just save this and run this once again running pretty great now uh, we just have to uh, access this result and in that result we have to access this face landmarks and we have to store it somewhere and save it so that we can use it later on so i'm going to save it it as a numpy array i'll store it in a numpy format and how to do that very easy very straightforward i'll create a let's say a list x a main list and inside this for a particular row arr let's just call this you know we'll just call it a row or i'll call this data or instead let's just leave it capital x and instead of row let's just call this list lst all right so this list will be our row and this x will will be the collection of all the rows and this list will have uh, 1020 columns of all my landmarks of my face landmark left hand landmark and right hand landmark now this result can be none also if it is not able to find anything in the frame so if the result is not Null, none or we'll just simply say if result dot face landmark if there is someone in the frame we will store its data how we'll store it is very easy and straightforward i'll just quickly uh, write this and then explain you let me just give some space so that it don't confuse you all right so let's save this okay so if there is someone in the frame we will iterate in result dot face landmark dot landmark it is a list and i will going to go through all of those uh, 
objects of data and this i has two properties i dot x i dot y I, I would say it is pretty straightforward dot x position dot y position why we are subtracting it let's just leave this for now i will explain you why we are subtracting this with very uh, good example similarly we will uh, this is just for our face landmarks similarly let's do for uh, left hand and right hand again i'll just write it and then explain you the code all right so it's pretty straightforward similar to this if there is someone in the frame get inside this store its face landmarks and if the left hand is in the frame meaning if the left hand is visible same as this store uh, left hand landmarks dot x and dot y position oops here should be y uh, don't worry i'll explain you in a bit when it's the right time for this and what if the left hand is not in the frame just a store 0.0, .0 in place of that all those 42 points because this ls this uh, result dot left hand hand marks dot landmark has a, a size of 21 and 21 times 2 meaning for x and for y give us 42 and in those places we'll have 0.0, .0. similarly let's do the same code for the right hand landmark let me just again write there would be nothing to explain in that it will be pretty straightforward similar to the previous one for uh, the left hand let's save this uh, 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 okay so finally we have our left hand right hand uh, face landmarks and now i would say it's a uh, right time to explain you why we are subtracting from the values again let me just use my drawing skills to explain you why we are doing that let me just draw a nice window my laptop screen and in that let's say here is me with pretty big smile yeah this is my face in my window in the window now you see that this particular face will have some landmark posi uh, my screen positions on the x-axis on the y-axis it will have some particular uh, position at the same time let's say uh, i am here and then i got here now i am at this position so this will have going to different position points so this particular phase and this particular phase these both are same giving the same reaction but have different values do we really want this thing in our data just think of it like this is just literally the same data but different data having the same meaning it is it will just going to create unnecessary data size and unnecessary data training do we really want that definitely not so what's the solution for that let me just explain you that also now this time i will draw big face so that it is easier for me so this has some this position and this position let's say all right so let's take this particular key point uh, a landmark at an instance and this particular key point will have some x value and have some y value with respect to this origin and if this landmark point is at this position it will have this particular x value and this particular y value pretty straightforward nothing to explain it but this is not what we want we want to store this particular landmark value with respect to this landmark let's say this is the nose so with respect to nose all of these other key points will be stored in my data all of these key points with respect to this so that is why what we are doing over here we are saying i dot x minus result dot face landmark dot landmark one is my reference point instead of 0, 0.0 dot x value subtract the x value and dot y value subtract the y value similarly for the hand i am storing with respect to the eighth uh, per eighth landmark point of my hand with respect to that and dot x value dot y value subtracted and similarly dot x of right dot x of y and we are storing it in this format now we are almost done so this all particular this all code is for storing one sample in the lst variable so once this lst have something in it meaning if someone is in the frame and if someone is in the frame we have collected all of that and meaning lst have some values in it so we'll say x dot append this lst that's it uh all right so that's i think that's all uh now we just need a trigger to let's say the data size data size 
is equal to zero initially. So let's say I want to collect 100 sample or 200 sample or 50 sample. So this data size will help us for that. So once we have appended this, we'll say data size is equal to data size plus one, meaning we have uh, stored one row in our X or in our data set. And then finally we'll say if data size gets greater than 99, we'll say uh, we have collected 100 sample of data and that's enough. Uh, just stop it from here. And then finally, just it's just a matter of saving our data. How to save? As I said, we are going to store, save it in the format of NumPy. So we'll say np.save uh, the file name. The file name, let's say just data.npy and the array we are going to use np.array. Now it's not done yet. Look, we are storing one for one particular emoji 100 samples but the data size is data.npy so what can we do we can say the data name or we'll just say directly name is equals to input and we'll say enter the name of the data all right so this name will contain the name of that data and before saving this we'll just pass this name over here and we'll just format this that's it uh, yeah, I think that's much of it. Uh, before going, uh, stopping this, we'll say printf, uh, not printf, C language, uh, print dot shape, just to confirm that we have some shape of the data. At least it's not empty. It should not be, but still let's confirm this. One more thing I would like to change is to just, just wait it over here. The user should know that how many samples we have collected. So we are going to convert, we are going to use save to dot put text to put the text on frame and that data size will be converted to string. And then, yeah, that's it, pretty straightforward code. Let me just run this once again and see if everything is working fine or not. All right, so it is asking for the name of the data. So let's say I'm going to give uh, good luck. Good luck data. All right, so uh, I think there is something. No, 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 there is nothing wrong in it. Let's just finish. Okay, is this something wrong going on? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> if data size is greater than, at least it should be if data size is, I think, oh my God, how can I do that? Or the data size, I'm so sorry for that. If data size gets greater than 99, then you should end. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm so sorry for that. Yeah, let's just run this once again. Um, how can I do that? Let's give thumbs uh, good luck. Um, let's give good luck sign to it. Oh, it's good luck. Try to change the hand positions, all of that. And you see the data shape is 100 rows and 1020 particular columns. So that's exactly what I explained to you earlier. Now let's just see by saying ls. So it has goodluck.npy. Let's just see this in the folder also. It's goodluck.npy. So the data is saved. Let's try giving some other sample. Let's say hello. As I said, try to change the data. You see that we have collected 67, 75, 80. All right. So we have another uh, data, hello.npy. The size is 816kb, the good luck. And similarly, you can collect as much data you want. Uh, I think that is it for the data collection part. If you still have any queries or you want to do something other than that, if your project is much different from this, you just try commenting down in the video. I would try to make different video for that also. So this is for data collection. In the next video, we are going to collect more data and then load that data, create the model, and then finally run the inference all of that in the other video. So this is enough for the data collection. Uh, yeah, I feel like everything is fine, but still if it has some error, I would address that in the next video. So this is it. I hope you know how to collect the data, how to think of a problem, how to start with the project. The first part is data collection. So that's it, bye.